385 horsepower, right under 3,000 pounds as far as curb weight goes. Uh, zero to 60, I wanna say it's a 4.1, which is kind of insane when you think about the fact that it's a rear wheel drive car with under 400 horsepower. What's going on YouTube? Myself and Taylor are about to head to the Galleria, which is like a big mall here in Houston. But I wanna do a video today kind of showing y'all what it's like to live with the GT4. Put about 3,000 miles on it over the course of three months. Uh, it's been my daily car with the exception of a couple rainy days and stuff where I take the Range Rover. But for the most part, that's been my everyday car. So first thing you gotta know about the GT4, you don't have a whole lot of space to put anything, but since it's a mid-engine car, you do have a front trunk and a back trunk. Or what's a front? It's not a bonnet. I, mean, I have a bonnet and a, a boot. You have two boots. I have a bonnet and a boot. You have two boots. I have two boots, left and right. Pretty much what I'm getting at here is that you're not gonna wanna buy one of these if you have a whole lot of things that you gotta transport around on a daily basis. They're just not, not made for that. I don't have a whole lot of storage space. This car is all about, I guess, like the sum of its parts. So if you look at it on a sheet of paper, it's not that great. If you compare this to a Z06 Corvette, they're similar in price, but on paper, the Z06 is like a much better buy. This car is all about its personality. It's just a very precise kind of like track weapon. And that's why I'm so in love with it. Couple that up with the fact that it's just a really rare car. Um, I don't know the exact production numbers, but there's not a whole lot of these things running around in the US. Um, and then on top of that, mix in Porsche's option system, the way they do their options, where then you start kind of subgrouping the cars by this model that has this option and this option, because these are really sought after options. And you end up with some cars that are very, very rare. I think this car option, the way it is, there's probably only like three or four in the US, kind of the same spec. Um, so you mix all that together and you have like the sum of its parts and what it is. And that's the GT4, and that's why I love this car so much. So. I said in the RS5 video that a car doesn't have to be ridiculously fast to be fun. And the GT4 is like the embodiment of that. Not super fast in a straight line. Even on a track, there's cars out there that'll beat it for less money. But it's so much fun to drive. And I don't know if that's just the manual transmission or the way the engine sounds or the way you know the steering and everything just kind of comes together. But as a whole total package, the GT4 is just on another level to me. It's, it's, there's nothing else quite like it for the price point. This, you have the GTER, uh, Corvette Z06. I wouldn't throw the M4 anywhere in this class. I wouldn't say that Mercedes really has anything in this class. That's fair to say, right? The GTS is not really in the same class as this. I don't think the C63 is in the same class as GT4 either. It's not like a true, you know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a car, but it's not a... I, I wouldn't put it in the same class. I think really the GTR and the Z06 are the main competitors at this price point. I own two GTRs and I own one C6 Z06. I haven't, I haven't owned a C7, but I have driven it. And I'm gonna take the GT4 over both those every single time. Interior wise, you can't really beat Porsche. So everything has a purpose. There's no bullshit, I guess. Um, I've owned cars in the past that have these ridiculous screens and all these features and they drive themselves and they do all that. The GT4 is not about that. Really, I don't think any of the cars in Porsche's lineup are about that, especially not the GT cars. Everything's to the point. Everything in the interior has a reason to be here. And the steering wheel is like the perfect size in my opinion. The thickness of the steering wheel is, again, like the perfect size you can hold on to it. The way the shifter sits, the linkage between gears and how short throw it is. Everything is just put together for the driver's enjoyment. And when I take these cars, I know they're not meant to be daily cars, but when I take these cars and I drive them every day, I'm looking for that experience. I'm looking for that, the next level. Like I said before, on paper, this thing shouldn't be as good as it is. And it's only as good as it is because the driver wants that experience. In my scenario, I know there's people out there that don't like the GT4, but for me, for what I do, and out of all the cars I've driven, the GT4 and the big brother, the GT3, are just like the perfect cars for me. There's just something about them. There's something about the way they drive and handle and all that that comes together and it just, it makes an awesome car. Just from like nature of being taller, I have bigger feet. So it's hard for me to really heel toe any car that I drive, especially 
on top of that a lot of the European cars are smaller on the inside so it's just really hard to heel toe. Um, cars nowadays are implementing rev matching which is essentially heel towing for you and then you don't have to really worry about it and I know it's kind of cheating I know a lot of people will say oh that's just cheating you're not really driving well whatever it does an amazing job and the GT4 probably has the best implementation of it I've seen so far um, if you don't know what rev matching is it's essentially when you're downshifting in like a PDK or matches your, your revs but in a manual transmission if you were to downshift um, if I take rev matching off if I downshift from where I am right now into let's say fourth so I'm in sixth and going to fourth if I just let go of the clutch you can see us lurch forward a little bit because the revs are not matched to that gear right obviously at, at fourth gear it's going to be at a little bit higher rpm so normally you can just rev match yourself but if you're coming into a turn or something hard you have one foot on the brake you have your other foot on the clutch there's not a whole lot of time for you to be able to take your foot off the brake so obviously you have to use your heel and your toe to kind of play with it um the, the porsche takes care of that for you so if i turn it back on and i'm in fourth now and i'll jump from fourth to second it did it for me now I can just go. Let's touch on maintenance real quick. GT4, I've put 3,000 miles on it in three months. It hasn't had any maintenance. I topped it off with oil once, that was it. So yearly maintenance costs on this car estimated right at like $1,000, $1,500, not including tires. That's not bad at all by any means. Um, the GTRs that I owned were worse than that maintenance a year. Um, yes, it's a Porsche, but I wouldn't say it's any more expensive than owning a Corvette or a GTR or something along those lines. I'd say it's right on par with any other $100,000 car when it comes to maintenance. Um, some cars are way worse, Maserati. <laughs> Ferrari, <laughs> yeah, you can get a Maserati, you can go buy a used Maserati right now for 60 grand, but you're gonna spend 3,000 a year in maintenance, 4,000 a year in maintenance. So um, Porsche's kind of got you covered on that one. And I also really love that it's Porsche. I know I'm, I'm always pushing Porsche, pushing Porsche. It's always like the brand of choice for me, but I like that there's a dealership everywhere. I like that when I take this thing in for service, they'll give me a Panamera to drive for the weekend or so. You know, it's, it's just nice to have that big brand kind of backing this thing as opposed to the Z06. You go buy the Z06, take it in for service, they're either not gonna give you a loaner or they're gonna give you like a fucking $10,000 Cobalt. Porsche, you get treated like you own a Porsche. You go into the dealership and you're a VIP. It's all just a nice experience and that kind of goes with the branding there. I'm gonna get some shit for that. Everyone's like, oh, you're fucking arrogant. Well, it's the truth. It is the truth. I, I, I owned GTRs and when I had my GTR, I took it in for service and it bugged me so much that when I took my GTR for service, you had no urgency at all, right? I bought a $100,000 car from you, Nissan. And when I go into your dealership, there's no urgency. No one wants to help me out. Finally, after sitting there for 10 minutes, someone would walk over and ask if I needed something. You know, finally get it into service or whatever. They don't want to give you a loaner. If they do give you a loaner, it's going to be like the, the cheapest thing on the lot in the back is going to be your loaner. And it's like, when you buy a $100,000 car, I feel like it should come with some other things. And I, my mind, Chevy and Nissan don't do that. So between the three kind of in that price point, I, I definitely think Porsche's got a beat on that that aspect of it. I can honestly say after three months of owning this car, I really don't have a complaint with it. I'm happy with it. Um, maybe a little bit more power, but I never thought I'd say this and coming from a car guy, I know this is like something you're never supposed to say in your life, but I really don't think it needs more power. It wouldn't be worse with more power, but I don't necessarily think it'd be a better car with more power either. I think it's, it, it's good how it is right now. That's the first and only time you'll ever hear that out of me because normally I want more power, want more power, want more power. I'm content with this thing having 385 horsepower. I don't think it needs 500. When the GT4 RS comes out, it has 500 horsepower, and I drive one of those, I'll probably come back to this and say I was dead wrong. Closing points. 
this video is just like an update over the last three months of ownership of my GT4. And I could say three months later, I'm still very deeply, deeply in love with this car and Porsche as a brand. Um, pretty much guarantee my next car will be another Porsche. The GT4, and I feel like car people are gonna be the ones who really understand this, but it's just a very special car. And I feel like there haven't been a whole lot of special cars produced in the last 10 years. Yes, you have, you know, the Bugattis and the Paganis of the world. But at this price point, I would argue this is one of the only special cars built in the last decade. Um, you know, a car that really is like a timeless piece of art. Now, a lot of people are gonna disagree here, but you know, the GTR, the Z06, they're a dime a dozen, they're everywhere, everyone has one. And they just don't have the same driving experience. This thing, yeah, it's not the fastest in a straight line, it's not the fastest around a track. It's probably not the fastest in any aspect. But it gives you an experience that the others just don't honestly in my personal opinion and i feel like some of you understand that and some of you probably won't but you know whatever appreciate you guys watch this video like subscribe share and i'll catch you guys in the next one